everybody. This is the one and only Mr. LP up in Live and Global Media. And I have a wonderful special guest uh, with me today. I have somebody that's near and dear to my heart, a lifelong friend, and I could not do anything in this world without making sure that she is happy. Please allow me to introduce you to one and only uh, the queen, the writer, the director, everything else, and also a very good basketball player that I was able to meet. But anyway, uh, the Queen Natalie Hodge, how are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing great, Steve. Thank you so much for having me on Enliven. I really support, I really, you know, appreciate the support that you've given me over the years and everything. And the nice flashback to basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there. I've been trying to get I've been trying to get that t-shirt of all <laughs> it has been oh, very my goodness. <laughs> so hey, it was just something fun. Well, first and foremost, um, I want to personally not just me, but a lot of friends uh, from home want to always say thank you for uh, you know doing something at home when there's always a very big challenge. Not everybody's able to do it, including myself. Um, and being able to do something home and production and building and things like that and be able to tag the word Martinsville and recounting with it. Um, not that many people are able to have that gravitas to be able to do it and you have been able to do it and take it further. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, thank you for, for saying that. Um, it's been a journey, but what I, I feel about this community is that we're capable of absolutely any and everything. And we have to remember that. I think, you know, we kind of got caught up in this narrative of things left, people left, industry left, and not remembering the fact that we are strong and we are creative and, you know, we're accustomed to making something out of nothing. So these projects have been indicative of that spirit of, you know, who we are as creators and, um, innovators and you know diehard country folks. So <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about being able to do stuff here and to highlight local talent. There's so many amazing people in this community who um, could go head to head in any market, you know, with their skill set. Very much, and not even people really get the opportunity because it's always something that you know. Even from there, you at best you have to go to Greensboro, Raleigh, or Charlotte. And then you always have to come all the way back, if not rich, all the way to DC and further. So um, it's a wonderful opportunity. And I pray that many more um, you know, studios, filmmakers, and use the opportunity. If nothing else, it's a beautiful backdrop for a variety of different things, uh, whether you want to do it for a country or business or just anything else. So many things have been done in, uh, uh, you know, out of desperation or out of creativity, things have to be done. You'd be amazed at what you can find if you just open your eyes. Absolutely, yes. I have been, um, you know, sounding the alarm and letting people know all over the country who I've worked with on film productions um, that this is the spot to be in right now. Um, we have some, as you mentioned, incredible um, backdrops for production and some great people. And the community has been so supportive. I can't even list the number of resources and opportunities that have been made available to me from people in this community who want film production here and who've rolled out the red carpet to me. So I know that as others discover this as a location, that same hospitality and warmth will be shared. As a woman who has uh, created, um, you know, you have various various different branches in your entrepreneurship, and especially in film production, you all had to play many hats um, in a variety of things, and also have to be creative in this world, pandemic world. But we've had experience in being in other locales where we've had bad weather anomalies, uh, you know, just people issues, a variety of different things. How uh, did that experience help you prepare for the world that we live in? Well, Steve, to be honest, you know, having lived all over the country and had to create a new life and a new beginning in new places. Um, sometimes, you know, I lived in the Bay Area for six months and I created a whole life, 
you know, and then I moved to Detroit and I had to restart. And then I moved, you know, back to upstate New York and I had to restart again. So all of those restarts have um, caused me to really just examine the landscape. What's going on right now? What are the resources available? Um, what, what can I do to get started from ground zero and build from there? So um, as we moved into, you know, this pandemic world and things started to shut down, I, you know, made an assessment again. What are the resources available? What are the things that I can do in this moment? And so at first film production was not an option as we were navigating um, all of the new shutdown stuff, um, but writing was. And so I created a lot of different um, projects. I also started working on a book, which just I just released. And, um, and then when things opened up a little bit more, we started the film production for, for Stolen Crowns. So just always examining where we are, what I can do within the context of where we are. How did the background of having such strong leadership at home, parentage, uh, heritage as well, and also just those things, how did it help you individually as a woman, especially being a woman of color with all the challenges and dynamics that comes with that? How did that prepare you? Oh, it's everything. And this is why my company is named Rudy's Girl Media, because, you know, I honor my parents, Rufus and Judy, and everything that I do. And I carry those lessons that they shared with me into every single meeting, um, every production, every endeavor. And um, yeah, it's been everything. My dad uh, owned and operated a convenience store in Leatherwood. And just being with him um, in that space and seeing him maneuver and to create opportunities and figure out different hustles. And, you know, one week he might be selling cars. The next week he's got, you know, pinball machine. Like it was just always something going on. And that taught me that you really can't lean on one particular kind of hustle too long, you know, be diversify your portfolio of hustles. So mm -hmm. that was a big lesson. And then I think my mom was a balancing act for me. Um, she was all about, um, or she is all about, um, you know, follow through with commitments, um, be solid, um, you know, very connected to spirituality and being good to people. Um, for sure, both of them had that um, as a trait. And I just feel really, really blessed to have had parents who invested in me and believed in me, even when they didn't necessarily understand some of my crazy moves, um, some of my business ideas, you know, the film production stuff wasn't um, necessarily something that my mom had envisioned for me when I first got started with it, um, but she's grown to appreciate what I do now. I can understand that with uh, all the photography and video and cameras and things like that. It was always like, where's all the computers and technology and stuff? And even then before that, it was always military lawyers. So I can understand um, those uh, different dynamics uh, trying to explain <laughs> it's like why we're doing it uh but with that lesson it also taught me um trying to not uh try to get validation for those who won't let you park in um uh, parking lot next to the building so keep moving <laughs> uh going forward uh currently you know with all the writing and things now we're moving forward with the film project regarding domestic violence could you tell us a little bit about that so Stolen Crowns is a short film and it's all about, um, I would say compassion is, is a, a number one theme. Even though I know when people watch, they'll be looking for that and um, it, the storytelling displays it in a very unique way. How do we 
how do we see people who are going through a struggle? How do we connect to people who we feel like are not like us? How are we good neighbors? Do we speak up when we see someone who is experiencing a challenge? So it, it causes the audience to do some self-reflection about how we view uh, individuals who are in situations that involve domestic violence. And I'm excited for the conversation that people will have as a result of the short film, um, because there are some really interesting themes and dynamics that play out over the course of the project. Well, this project um, and the previous project, how has it grown you as a producer, filmmaker, writer, and with your previous books that you have written? How has it grown and helped you change the shape and the focus versus let's say you try to do this project a year from now, or, I'm sorry, a year before, five years before. Uh, how did it help you mold your project? The biggest thing I can say about my creative work at this point in time is that I'm moving very organically. So Cell, which was last year's short, short film, came about because um, some colleagues and I were talking about, um, well, one colleague in particular mentioned that he was involved in music production and he wanted to score a short film. And he asked if I had ever um, thought about writing one. And I said, absolutely. I just haven't gotten around to it. And then I said, well, if I do this, are you going to help? And he said, yeah. So there, it was probably about a week later, I had the first draft of Cell written. And the story was very much about what we were dealing with in our nine to five life, which was workforce development helping people in the community connect to job opportunities. And a big group that I'm passionate about are people who come home from prison and who are trying to re-enter and connect to opportunities. So that felt like a very natural story that I could tell that I would feel really good about telling what that journey is like for some uh, men and women who um, come home from being incarcerated. So that was Cell. Stolen Crowns happened because someone who is a domestic violence advocate, uh, Sharika Carter, attended a screening of Cell. And she was inspired and felt like that would be a great tool to tell the story of domestic violence survivors. And so a few months after that initial screening, we sat down and talked about some of the themes that she would like to see in that project. And I said, I would love to put something together for you to take a look at. So I did, and she loved it. And we decided that we were going to move forward with producing this piece, Hook or Crook. And so, <laughs> yeah, so um, the turning point for us in actually making it happen was that um, I received some CARES Act money for my business. And that, that was amazing. That was such a gift. And I really appreciate Henry County for um, blessing me with that. And that was the first money that went into the project. So mm -hmm. it was the, the starting point for the project. And then um, over time, sponsors have come in and given to the project. People have provided locations. Crystal Hairston was a big sponsor for us. She provided us with her home. She fed the cast and crew. Oh, Just, man. Yeah, it be, I mean, so many people. Yeah. I, I don't even want to get into all the names because I will forget someone, but- It's people, just beautiful. Yeah, it was really beautiful. People just gifted us things to be able to do this project on a dime. And, and it was excellent and it was a great display of community. So, the things that will happen next for me will flow in that way. You know, people will present an idea and we'll just begin the work. Shoe Crazy's sparkling strawberry passion. Why be still when you can sparkle? 
Shoe Crazy Wine, proudly made in the USA. Drink responsibly. Um, one question that I've been meaning to ask you for years, uh, because we've both been through so many different dynamics, um, and this ties a line to the cell, uh, the books, and everything else. What does healing mean to you? Well, healing is a process that is tied to your whole life journey. We are constantly repairing, you know, every day new cells um, emerge in our bodies and old cells disappear. We are, we are in a state of constant flux. So mm -hmm. healing is something that is intrinsically tied to the journey. And I think it's important for us to operate in a very conscious space about creating healing moments and spaces that will facilitate that happening. So naturally, we're always healing. But I think when we plug into being good to ourselves, being good to others, um, dealing with our stuff, uh, mm -hmm, dealing with our stuff, um, focusing on body, mind, and spirit, those things create a platform for that healing to happen in a real and profound way above and beyond just the normal process. Amen. Amen. So uh, for those who uh, are interested in things, how can they find out more information about Queen Hodge, what's next, what's going on, how they can get more information regarding underground? So I'm active on social media platforms. People can follow me at Natalie K. Hodge on Instagram. I'm on Facebook as well with the same handle. Um, there's a Rudy's Girl Media Facebook page where you can see all of the latest updates about film projects, about um, my new vlog and blog, which is um, all about living your best life. So those platforms, you can find me. Um, I also have a website, nataliehodge.com, features the blog that I just started and information about my books and, and everything that's going on. And um, there's a Rudy's Girl Media website and Stolen Crowns website and a Cell website. So all of that stuff is there and you can find it on any of those platforms and just click links. I feel like web mania but <laughs> like, there's a lot of sites where you can find stuff. So, um, but there's, there's no way to miss it. One will link you to the other and to the other um, so that you can find out all the cool stuff that's going on. So for the, uh, those who are inquiring minds, what's the next book? Ooh, okay. Well, let me just drop the line of the book that's out now because oh, I did okay. say that earlier. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, no, it's uh, from unemployed to unstoppable. It's a 30 day transformation guide and it's available on Amazon right now. So head that way and pick it up. And it is all about um, people kind of finding purpose through this 30 day exploratory process that I've put together. The Activities each day are very simple, but they're very profound in their effect when you put the whole 30 days together and people concentrate on doing those activities each day to jumpstart um, ideas about purpose and to also make connections to that purpose and to get some real experience. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun writing. It's been a lot of fun going through that process I tell people these are all processes that I've personally been through. So I'm not telling you something that I haven't done. Um, so that's the book that's out now. And what's next as far as writing? I have quite a few things that I can <laughs> access next. I think I'll just follow the spirit and, you know, whatever rises to the top that will be the next book project. Amen. Well, we plan on seeing all these projects really swimming, you know, all these awards and um, 
I'm going to see what we can do to get your uh, Grammy and uh, Oscar nominations and or spoken word for Grammy and Oscar for film or whatever we need to do. All you know, of that, Steve. You know, all that. of get it, please. You know, just make sure you just like you know. You don't even have to mention my name. Just wear the pendant that says Mr. LP on the dress and be a correct. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> shapeless plug. Uh, but now you being a beautiful woman naturally uh, has all you know God be the glory. You are wearing some beautiful uh makeup now. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yes. I absolutely love this. This is from Queen Victoria Dollhouse of Glam. Amazing. It's a red velvet um matte lipstick, and it is my new favorite thing. So a lot of my photographs recently, I've, I've had this. Um, I have another um, lip that's more of a nude that's lovely as well, but this is, this is my favorite. Red <laughs> and well, you know, I like the color, but then I also like red velvet cake. So I thought, you know, perfect. Hey, we'll take it all from there. <laughs> well, I'll be sure to tell them um, they're very grateful. Um, it looks wonderful. Thank you. I love it. You go, girls. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you for it very much. Uh, stay with me, but thank you so very much um, for taking the time out to speak with me. We've been trying to get this interview for, uh, done for God knows how long <laughs> um, and things, That's but right. it's been forever in the day. But, you know, having, you know, personally and professionally, probably through the travels and we've been missing the planes and things over each other and stuff but um i thank you from the bottom of my heart not just because of my favoritism towards you but just as being the woman that you are uh, many people don't understand that you know i'm always pushing wonderful people whether they're a camera person or not i believe that they need to be in front of the camera and behind the camera because our children and our future and even our own personal circle needs to see it. Uh, we need to see it in a mindset of uh, moving forward. And even though it may not be the direction that people may understand, everything is not able, everything is not meant for everybody to be, uh, to understand, but it's meant to be seen that there's progress in your working. And that inspired, that alone inspires others to move forward and operating within their God's gift, within their spiritual gifts. And uh, your gifts, talents, skills, and abilities of all those different things are obviously shown casing in so many ways in that magnanimous view. And I uh, thank you so very kindly for that. Thank you so much, Steve. And you know, thank you to all of the enlivened fans uh, for tuning in and being a part. Um, for sure, Thanksgiving weekend, get your ticket uh, on Eventbrite to watch Stolen Crowns and support that project. Um, but thank you so much again, Steve. I appreciate no, you. No problem. And please, everybody, please take the time out. I know we're in a pandemic and everything is not um, always there, but here's a homegrown woman, a queen, a business that's, we're not out to pick your pockets. We're here. Here it is at an affordable cost of Five dollars, correct me. Five dollars. It's five dollars. So you can't get that wrong with that. Uh the book is worth a million dollars, but it's ten dollars on the Ten dollars. And let me just say this to you before we close out, because you sure. got on me about these prices. <laughs> I really I know. Steve said I should be charging two million dollars for this book. I said, Steve, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not trying to be the financial baron and things yeah. like that. It's just that, you know, you, uh, but I, I, I will say I understand and I wholeheartedly support it because I, I did get on you about it, but it's because I know, I, 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 I tell the truth. I tell the truth. I, I, no. I, you know, I feel like there's a tremendous amount of value in the book. So, the price of the book is not a reflection of the value that people will get from the book, but I want it to be accessible to anyone. I don't want people to look at a particular price and feel that it's a barrier. So for me, you know, $10 is something that you can kind of scrape together to change your life. So, mm -hmm. and that's what this book is about, guiding people toward life 
transformation. And, and I'll be honest, I, I can't talk because I will offer prices and videos and events for nominal prices as well. So it could be acceptable to others. So I, I'll tell the truth, but I'm not going to try to act like I'm going to clean it up. <laughs> yeah, I, give it, I, I, I deserve the face and the finger. So I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I own that. The mistake. Hey, not many men will do that publicly either. So hey, you, <laughs> I deserve you get, something. You get a kudos. Okay, I get a kudos. Okay, I get a slice of cake. Red velvet. Okay, all right. We'll take a red velvet cake. So, thank you so very much. Um, again, you can always uh, catch us on live and global media on uh, Facebook, our YouTube page, and so many other ways out there. Hashtag and live and. Global Media and Live and GM. You can also find me everywhere. Our email is in Live and E N L I V E N G M at gmail.com. I thank you so very kindly and please be safe out there. We're asking to be good to each other. Thank you so kindly and may you have a great and blessed. Bye bye. Shoe Crazy's sparkling strawberry passion. Why be still when you can sparkle? Shoe Crazy Wine, proudly made in the USA. Drink responsibly.